back up talking about priming and schemas. Um, so one interesting thing that can happen is that we can actually prime metaphors uh, um, in, 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 in the form of physical sensations um, about the body and mind that can actually change how we interpret people. Um, so for example, physical sensations like smelling something clean, feeling a hot bre- a beverage, holding something heavy can actually activate metaphors that influence uh, your judgment about a completely unrelated topic or person. And so these physical sensations can prime metaphors that changes how you view a particular person. And so there's actually been studies uh, where a participant um, encounters a stranger and they're holding either hot coffee or iced coffee. And for those people who have the hot coffee, it actually primes this because it's physically hot, the sensation is hot, primes the warm and friendly metaphor, and the participant will rate the stranger as more friendly, versus if they're holding an iced coffee, can actually prime that physical sensation of coldness, and unfriendly people are cold, and that uh, participant will actually rate somebody as more unfriendly um, if they're holding an iced coffee. We can also see this happen with other physical sensations like heaviness. So um, uh, holding a heavy clipboard, for example, can prime a metaphor of, of important things are heavier. They have, a, they have a heavier weight that can actually influence a person's judgment. So in this particular study uh, with, with clipboards, um, students uh, were given uh, clipboards that were heavier light and had to rate Uh, student opinion and if that opinion should be given more weight uh, um, on a campus issue. People who were holding the heavier clipboards rated that the opinions actually held more weight than than people who had actually lighter clipboards. So it can actually influence your decisions and interpretations. And this is sort of at a subconscious level. So Another thing, another mental strategy and shortcut that we use in, in terms of, uh, of decision making and, and how we think about things are uh, heuristics. So the word heuristic comes from the Greek word meaning discover. Um, so things like deciding what job to accept, what car to buy, who to marry, um, you know, we we tend to take mental shortcuts for certain decisions and certain uh, uh actions that we do because we want to make sure that what we do is, you know, we want to navigate our environment quickly and effectively. And so we want to make sometimes decisions very quickly and efficiently. And so not everything requires such controlled thinking as these decisions like accepting jobs, buying cars, marrying people, right? We don't have to do a thorough search of every single option with every single decision decision that we make. You know, if we're trying to decide where to eat lunch or what to eat, if we're trying to decide, do I want to use, you know, go to this parking spot or that parking spot, we don't have to sit and spend a week thinking about that thing. So we want to take mental shortcuts. Mental shortcuts should be efficient because we don't usually have time to fully search every single potential option. Um, And a lot of times our mental shortcuts can actually lead to really good decisions very quickly. Um, So schemas are, are shortcuts that that people use, right? Um, so this is kind of a form of, of, of a mental shortcut. Um, but we don't always have a ready-made schema for every single decision or judgment that we make. Um, and sometimes there are just too many schemas available. So sometimes we have to make other mental shortcuts to be able to make decisions quickly. And these are in the form of judgmental heuristics. So um, the uh, different kinds of heuristics are uh, uh, availability heuristics, representative representativeness heuristic. Oh my goodness, my brain. Um, representativeness heuristic. There we go. Uh, how representative that thing is of your of your typical schema. Okay. And so we're going to go through each one of these uh, different heuristics uh, so that you guys can get some examples of, of what, what these are. So these all fall under the umbrella of judgmental heuristics. So they're, they're, these both here are considered different kinds of judgmental heuristics of uh, a mental shortcuts to make us make decisions more quickly. So let's first talk about the availability heuristic. So this is where uh, we base a judgment uh, with how easy it is to bring something to, to mind. 
Okay. Now the problem is, um, is that sometimes the easiest thing to remember is not typical of the overall picture. And that means that we actually make a, a faulty decision. So we might do something wrong because, um, it's the easiest thing that comes to our, our brain. So let's talk about uh, this in the real world. So let's talk about physicians. So physicians um, have been found to use this availability he heuristic when making the uh, diagnoses. Um, so if you have a person who comes in and they um, have a, a bad cough and a really bad fever and they're not feeling well, um, you know, you a physician might immediately go, well, it sounds like you have COVID. Um, and that's because it's the most easy, it's the easiest thing that comes to their brain. It's the, it seems, you know, straightforward. It seems that uh, more people um, have had this lately. And so that's an easy thing that comes to mind. Now, they may not consider other diagnoses because um, they immediately run with this availability heuristic because it's the most available thing to them. So in order to be efficient and quick, they might go ahead and decide to diagnose in this way. Now, you know, nine times out of 10, they might actually be right. Okay. Same thing as if it's the flu. Well, those are flu symptoms. It's flu season. It's, I've had 10 people come in already with the flu. That makes the most sense. And that's nine times out of 10, you might be right, but you might make the wrong judgment if the diagnosis is actually something else because you missed a particular symptom because you're looking for what's the most, the easiest and most available heuristic on the tip of your mind. Um, so that would be an example of availability heuristic. It's just whatever is the easiest to call up. Sometimes that's what we end up going with because it it's quick, efficient, and makes the most sense. So uh, representativeness heuristic is another kind of heuristic, which is where we actually classify something uh, based on how similar it is to what we would consider to be a typical case. Okay, so if you have a description of somebody who you would describe as free, they don't wear a lot of clothes, they wear flip flops a lot, they're carefree, enjoy sitting in flowers, looking at the stars, they tend to, you know, not take showers very often. You might go, well, what kind of person do you think this represents? Well, what is that, you know, somebody that is tends to be a hippie, right, tends to fall in this category because it represents what a typical person in this fashion might might act like or be like, right? Um, so we've got some other examples of this too. So uh, let's let's consider this quiz. Consider the letter R in the English language. Now I want you to think: uh, does does this letter occur more often as the first letter of a word, for example, rope, or more often as the third letter of a word, for example, park? So I want you to take a moment. I'm gonna. Uh, you can pause. And then we'll come back and answer what you think. So here is an example of how representative you think this thing might be. So most people think that the answer is A, and that's because people tend to find it easier to think of a bunch of examples that begin with R, okay? And by using the availability heuristic, they assume that the ease with which they're able to bring examples means that there must be more words that just begin with R. But the actual answer is B. There's a lot more words where the uh, third uh, letter of the word is R than it is the first. So that's a, an example of a mistake that you can make. So let's look at the second one. So suppose you flipped a coin, a fair coin, six times. Which sequence is more likely to occur? Heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, or heads, 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 tails, tails, tails. So which one do you think is more likely? Now, in the case where we think that people tend to answer, most people think that A is true because it feels more random, right? It feels less likely that heads, 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 tails, tails, tails is a random sequence that you can flip. The actual answer is C. Both outcomes are equally likely given that the outcome of the coin flips are random events. But because A looks more random, feels more representative of what random would be, 
people tend to go with this one. But both of them have the most more equal chance to actually ha occur.